As human beings, we often find ourselves reflecting on the purpose of our existence and the meaning of our lives. We continually strive to make sense of the experiences we go through and the challenges we encounter. We use logic and reason to navigate this journey, yet we sometimes fall short of truly understanding our lives. This pursuit of understanding is essential to leading a calm and purposeful life. When our lives possess meaning, we find the strength to face adversity and overcome challenges. This leads us to a fundamental question. How can we better understand our lives? And how do we make sense of everything in it? So to address this question, I would like to share with you a quote from Kierkegaard that has a very profound meaning. This marks the beginning of a new series called One Quote for Life, where I'll be sharing with you my favorite philosophical quotes to help us lead a better and more fulfilling life. Søren Kierkegaard was a 19th century Danish philosopher who many consider to be the father of existentialism. Even though he was a prolific writer with over 30 major works about theology and philosophy, he never actually considered himself to be a philosopher. As the professor Michael Segru introduces him, he is a theologian with the soul of a poet and the analytical abilities of a philosopher. Kierkegaard's philosophy was a direct response to Hegel's idealism, which dominated most of European philosophical thought at the time. Unlike most philosophers, Kierkegaard didn't want to obtain any objective truth about reality, but instead, he wanted to ask subjective questions on what people value and how they should live their lives. This focus on the subjective experience and the human condition made him a precursor to existentialism. Along with Friedrich Nietzsche, they paved the way for the 20th century existentialist philosophers such as Sartre, Camus, and Heidegger. All these philosophers had this in common. We should live authentically by creating our own meaning and values while embracing the angst and despair that come with true self-awareness. Now, after briefly introducing the author, let's explore his simple yet profound quote that can guide us in our lives. Life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. This quote will be our main focus today. It is actually a shortened version of one of Kierkegaard's journal entries. To better understand its important implications on our lives, we should consider the full passage. It is really true what philosophy tells us, that life must be understood backwards. But with this, one forgets the second proposition, that it must be lived forwards. A proposition which, the more it is subjected to careful thought, the more it ends up concluding precisely that life at any given moment cannot really ever be fully understood. Exactly because there is no single moment where time stops completely in order for me to take position, to do this going backwards. Soren Kierkegaard Since we are rational beings, we are capable of using our intellectual capabilities to analyze and understand our lives in retrospect. From a Socratic point of view, this is what differentiates us from animals, to be rational. And this rationality includes analyzing and understanding events. We are capable of reflecting on experiences to derive lessons and conclusions from them. This is how we navigate life from a young age. We learn by doing and by reflecting. It is a learning process that we all go through. We go on with our lives trying to make sense of everything, trying to create templates and frameworks to follow and abide by. We approach life as a test and we're always looking for answers. We try to connect the dots between people, experiences and events. And this helps us make sense of the whole story and paint a coherent bigger picture. However, life is a bit more complicated than that. Since we all move in time in the same direction and we're constantly moving forward, we never have a chance to pause and fully comprehend life. It continuously unfolds before us. The present is a constant stream of becoming that when we try to analyze it with our templates, becomes quickly outdated and slips through our fingers. In essence, the idea being conveyed here is that when we take a moment to reflect on our lives, we might feel that we have a good understanding of who we are and what our purpose is. However, this feeling of understanding is fleeting because life is constantly moving forward. We must continue to make choices and take actions that lead to new discoveries, which in turn, alter our self-perception and change who we are. Therefore, if we initially feel like we have a clear understanding of our lives, it is likely to change over time. Simply put, 
Being alive means constantly evolving and becoming. This is not to say that reflection is useless, but only to point out that it should be taken with an open mind. We should all know that today's views will certainly be different than tomorrow's. Our views on our lives are mere interpretations for the most part and not fixed truths. By living forward, Kierkegaard suggests that we are destined to live with incomplete knowledge and understanding of our lives, no matter how much we desire otherwise. We can never fully predict what will happen based on the templates we've created from our past, nor we can understand any event immediately when it happens. We need to wait for things to unfold in order to be able to look at them backwards and understand them. And this is the key here of living forward. We always need to keep going forward with incomplete information for the now. Whatever happens in the moment wouldn't be understood with the mindset of today or with the perspective of today. So everything needs to be understood backwards as the first proposition suggests. This stipulates that there is no point in obsessively trying to make sense of events or plan every detail. We should rather aim to accept the uncertainties of the future. By doing so, we can avoid being overwhelmed by our worries and expectations. We should move forward with an open mind and an acceptance of what may come. Instead of wasting our energy on constantly thinking about the past or the future as problems that need solving, we should experience the present moment and let reality unfold naturally. It doesn't mean that we should never think about the past or the future, but our reflections shouldn't be centered around solving them. It is good to reflect but not to dwell on the past, and it's good to plan but not to obsess over the future. This is the key to a balanced life. The present impacts the past and the future. What you do today might help you better understand and appreciate your past experiences. And what you do today might also help you have an aim and become a better version of your Yourself. Life shouldn't be approached as a test that needs answers, but rather as a story that requires mindfulness. This is all we got, the present moment. So whenever you're facing adversity or uncertainties, always tell yourself that eventually with time, everything will make sense. All the dots are going to connect. To rid you of any anxieties and worries, you should trust that this will happen. And this notion of trust leads us to our next point. So what does this mean in relation to the rest of Kierkegaard's thinking? Kierkegaard argues that if our knowledge and experience cannot always be relied upon to guide our actions, then something else must step in to motivate our choices. We always think that with careful thought, we will find answers to everything. And we might indeed find some answers, but the equation remains incomplete. And according to Kierkegaard, the missing link is passionate faith. He argues that we must dare to live passionately and make a leap of faith, or else we will always be limited by our intellect and rationalization process. A leap of faith represents a radical act of commitment to an idea or belief, regardless of whether or not it could be rationally proven. This commitment requires a willingness to embrace uncertainties and not try to rationalize the unknown. Kierkegaard takes the position that our reason is limited and cannot fully capture the complexity and nuances of human existence. Thus, relying on rationality alone to navigate a complex life will always lead to failure. This leap of faith is often associated with Kierkegaard's concept of religious faith. He believed that true religious faith requires a leap of faith, where the individual commits to believe in God despite the absence of empirical evidence. This commitment is not based on the rational or empirical proof, but rather on a subjective experience of the divine. But what if you don't believe in God? I saw your question coming. Well, the point here is not to believe in God or not, but rather to cultivate this faculty of passionate belief in something. When navigating our lives, passion is key. Regardless of whether that passion is centered on faith in God or the positive potential of the universe and the human spirit. This is the only way to reconcile the fact that life cannot be fully understood with our logical mind and needs an understanding that transcends logic and reason. Personally speaking, this idea is a perfect representation of all my life decisions since they were all based on a passionate belief in something that I didn't quite understand at the time. I was extremely frustrated that my family or my friends Friends didn't really understand what was driving me and what was that belief I had because the decisions weren't necessarily logical or rational. But with time, I learned that this is the concept of faith, 
It doesn't have to be a God. It just has to be a belief in something that moves you from the inside and that pushes you to take decisions or take risks. Now, I don't feel the urge to explain anything to anyone, not out of revolt, but rather because I trust my intuition and my inner calling or my inner voice. It is completely normal that the people around you won't share the same view because it comes from within. So they don't have any access to it. So in these situations, when you're met with an important decision, act on it. Trust yourself and trust your intuition. And this is the only thing that would differentiate you from a purely and extremely logical person to have faith. And this is, I think, key to the most rewarding decisions of our lives. Any rewarding decisions requires a risk. And we as rational human beings, we don't like taking risks. We want to play it safe. So by definition, a faith in something is the only thing that will move you towards a big move. So the conclusion here is to listen to yourself and to your intuition. We are much more than a rational mind. This quote is indeed very straightforward and this is exactly why I chose it for this video. I believe it could give us a simple yet effective guide on how to think about our past, present and future. And to finish this video, I would like to share with you another quote, not from a philosopher this time, but from someone who apparently perfectly understood Kierkegaard's message. You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. This approach has never let me down and it has made all the difference in my life. Steve Jobs. When reflecting on your past, know that you're not the same person anymore. And when feeling lost in life, trust that the dots will connect themselves in the future. And when planning for the future, keep an open mind because you're always changing. I'm really interested to know what is the one thing that you passionately believe in that keeps you going. Or using Kierkegaard's words, what is your leap of faith? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.